I'm Laureen and I am a Microsoft Certified Trainer. I've taken over 20 of these certification exams and I'm here to tell you my best tips for achieving success in the certification program. Here are three things you need to ensure exam success. First, your exam objectives. I'm often asked, what's on the exam? Objectives may be found on our website or in your Canvas course. You want to download this and use it as a checklist as you study. You should be familiar with the exam's objectives as this is what you may be tested on. Second, you need to understand the path to taking your exam, which includes Gmetrics practice exams and an official certification through Certiport. These are different systems and you will need a separate login for each of these. Finally, you need to know the mechanics of using Gmetric. First, most students need a minimum of 10 hours of study to successfully complete their exam. In order to take your exam with us, we require that you complete a practice test of 800 or higher in testing mode. Don't worry, on the day of the test, you will only need a 700 to pass. The Certiport exam can only be taken on a PC. To provide you with the closest experience to your exam, we recommend that you use one of the public computers throughout the university that has Gmetrics loaded on them. To get started, be sure to have your access code from your Canvas course. Let me go ahead and demo for you how to utilize Gmetrics. The first thing you need to do is to create a Gmetrics login. In a browser, type in gmetrics.net. While you see that you can sign in with a provider such as Google, we need to associate your Gmetrics with your SMU ID and email. So begin by clicking No Account, Sign Up. Fill out the form and be sure to include your SMU ID and email. This will allow us to provide practice exam grades to your instructor if they are requested and verify that you have completed the 800 testing mode score. Once you create the form, you will get a window indicating success. Don't log in yet. We want you to log into a computer that has Gmetrics downloaded on it, as in the library, or if you must use a virtual environment, we recommend using a Porto. For those who have taken this exam previously and logged in and did not associate their SMU email or ID, log into Gmetrics, click on your name, and then select My Account. Click on the pencil icon to edit and update your email and student number, then click Save. We talked about accessing Gmetrics on a PC and the library is our primary recommendation. Let's cover some additional options. And finally, I'll give you a demo of the best practices. For those of you who want to download Gmetrics on a PC, here's what you need to do. From the Gmetrics login page, you'll see a download icon. You'll be brought to the download page. Under PC, click the download button and install. I know the Mac option on the right looks like it's available. However, that is for other exams. While we understand that there are many Mac users out there, Gmetrics Office exams for PC can be accessed in a virtual environment. However, it may cause a reduced screen resolution or slow down if many students are accessing it at once. To begin, log in to smu.edu Aporto. A virtual PC will load. This will take a few minutes to set up. On the desktop, click the Gmetrics SMSE icon. You may receive a warning that your screen resolution is too slow. I recommend that you click the full screen button to improve your experience. The first time you take an exam, you will get a privacy option. Click close to proceed. If for some reason the toolbar is grayed out, try opening a new blank document or spreadsheet and return to your project to activate the toolbar. When you are done studying, click the window icon and click disconnect before you close your browser tab. Now that you understand the options for accessing Gmetrics, let's talk about how to use the software. Log in by clicking on the Gmetrics icon that is already downloaded on a PC or in a virtual environment. Begin by accessing this icon from the desktop. Remember, we aren't logging in from the web as we want you to have full access to the resources we have for you. When you first log in, you can complete the tour if you like, 
Then you will need to redeem your access code. Again, this is in your Canvas course where we have information about Gmetrics. Once your code is redeemed, you'll see an Office icon. You'll have the option to select your exam and take it in training mode or testing mode. When you begin your studies, you will likely need some assistance, so I recommend the training mode to start with. Select the exam you want. In this example, you'll see that two of the exams are official practice tests. These are the ones you want to focus on. One of the biggest mistakes I see students do is take only one of the practice exams over and over until they achieve their 800. The problem with that is one exam may not cover all the exam objectives, so make sure you do them both. I'm going to select training mode and download my test resources. You'll see this is a timed test. Your exam will be 50 minutes. The training mode will allow you to exceed that time, but the testing mode does not. Let's go over the interface of the window. At any time, you may resize the text of the window by clicking on the letter icon. Next to it, you will see the dock button. This is an important button, as sometimes you need to move the dock to see an item that's covered by the dock, like maybe a button or some text below. Click the dock, select Undocked, and move if necessary. Click again to redock. In this example, I'm working on the first of seven projects. Most tests have seven projects to complete in 50 minutes. However, the expert exams have approximately five. The Overview tab will tell you about your first project followed by five tasks. Read through each task carefully. When you have completed your task, select Mark Complete and move to the next task. If you don't know how to perform an action, you can use the Help button in Training Mode. Help assistance will not be available in the Testing Mode, nor will the Help or Microsoft Search feature be available for the actual exam itself. Once you click Help, you may need to scroll for all the instructions. Click Help again to close this feature. You can move ahead or return to a question with the next or previous button. If you are taking the test and don't know an answer to a question but are not using Help, click Mark for Review and you can return to the question later. In order to maximize your efficiency, begin by getting in the habit of using Mark Completed or mark for review for all your questions. When you go into your actual exam, this is the same format. So your strategy should be to answer all the questions you know first to gain your highest amount of points. Select mark for review for those you don't know and you can return to them at the end of the exam. It's very easy to waste time on a question that you don't know. So use this strategy for success. A feedback screen will show you the amount of correct answers. At any point, you can click Summary to go to any question throughout the exam. Clicking Restart Project will reset the current project you are working on. It will not erase the entire test. Finally, when you are done studying, select Save Project. I recommend that you save your test to the cloud. One last reminder, don't forget to keep your exam objectives handy. They are to your advantage to use as a checklist of what's on the exam. For more information, visit our website or email us at ittraining at smu.edu. Thanks for watching.